comment on my last video suggested I take a look at a now 10 year old CPU, a particular high end chip with the BA code name Devil's Canyon. It's the 4790K, you saw the title and thumbnail. I just had to drum up some suspense, part of the job description. Haswell is nostalgic for me. Their first computer I built had an i5-4670K, and Haswell's refresh brought updated thermal interface material to help improve temps as well as higher clock speeds. And between 2018 and 2022, I used the 4790K in my main rig. It was totally fine and usable. I ended up upgrading to a Ryzen 5 2600 for the extra cores. But in reality, I was just scratching an itch to switch up my system. Besides the extra cores helping in some render times, there wasn't any improvements in terms of gaming. I'm making this video briefly exploring this relic because a comment on my last video kindly asked me to re-explore Haswell with a newer GPU. Unfortunately, the newest one I have is a Radeon RX 5700 XT. If you've got a problem with that, you can send me a newer GPU. I'm comparing the 4790K to two other CPUs. The popular, though at this point kind of old too, Ryzen 5 3600, a six core with more cache, greater efficiency, and better instructions per clock. Even though this is an older chip, if you're still running this CPU or planning to get one at a great price, you'll be fine. Finally, in my personal rig, I have a Ryzen 7 5700. No, I didn't forget the X. Maybe you're familiar with this chip, as it's more available now. But when I bought it on eBay, it wasn't really known. And TBH, I wasn't fully aware of what it was until after I'd bought it for about $115. It's more like an R7 5700G without the G. So unlike the rest of the good 5000 series chips, it has less cache and no PCIe Gen 4 support, which kind of sucks. Even the 3600 has Gen 4 support, but not this guy. Eight cores at about four and a half gigahertz. Still has an improved architecture. Just a little lacking. I'm happy with the CPU, no buyer's remorse at all. But damn, I could have had the X. I've got some raw data to show you, but I know you brain rotters love colorful fancy graphs and subway surfers along with your benchmarks, so here. This is CPU Z's bench. I even overclocked the 4790K a little to 4.7 gigahertz at 1.32 volts. It runs a little hot and over 1.3 volts isn't recommended 24 seven, but at 1.3 volts, mine was getting crashes. So maybe it wasn't a good bin. Maybe if I locked in voltages better or delitted or something, maybe I can get to 4.8. And other than the multi-threading difference, the 4790K isn't that far off the 3600. However, the 5700 is better in both regards. Same story for Cinebench 2024. We'll do the gaming benchies here in a sec, all of which at 1080p. Though I thought I'd mention for the 4790K, I'm using an EVGA CLC240, and for the Ryzen 5, a Noctua NH L9 X65, and for the 5700, Arctic Freezer 33 Esports Edition. Thank you, Arctic. You sent that to me many years ago, and it wasn't until more recently I've been able to actually use it. So, namaste. Oh, wait, you're German. Uh, I don't know German. Tuck, uh, tuck, tusen tuck. Here's the temp and wattage numbers I got. The load temp and wattage was the highest recorded in my testing, usually in Cinebench. While in gaming, they were usually much lower. Lethal Company, after my last video, I noticed a few flaws in my testing. I now have a frame time graph. Uh, if it's not to your liking, maybe I could fix it later. If not, uh, do your own video, make do your own tests. But I also noticed Lethal Company is fairly single threaded. I mean, many games are. Also, the very low 1% lows were due to the same action, picking up the apparatus. Valheim, high settings, using Vulcan. The overclock on the 4790K didn't really seem to help and neither did going to the 5700 from the 3600. But the 5700 was an overall smoother experience. This could be due to slight variation in testing. I've also noticed the time of day can affect your performance, but it was really hard to get that matched up. Overwatch 2 on ultra settings. I didn't see any uplifts on the overclock for the 4790K, though we still seem to be CPU bound. While on both the 3600 and 5700, the GPUs pinned at 100%. However, within the average frame rate, there doesn't seem to be any benefit of going with the faster chip. But in the frame times, at least in my testing, the 5700 didn't seem to be a little bit tighter, a bit smoother of an experience. There could also be variants due to the different maps being played on. Either way, uh, all the CPUs did fine here. Uh, even this 10 year old chip, perfectly playable. And the two AMD CPUs are still not even current gen, and they're, they're doing just fine. 
Lastly, on Phasmophobia, highest settings with TAA on the same map, Tanglewood, all the CPUs had the same averages and the same potential for stuttering when you turned on equipment. Most of the time the GPU is at 99%, so until I get a better one, uh, it'll be hard to tell the difference between these processors. Yeah, yeah, I didn't test enough games, the titles you wanted, and in hindsight, more CPU bound tests would have been better. For example, on Phasmophobia, there were virtually zero difference between these processors. Valheim at least showed the Ryzen CPUs are better. Similar story in Overwatch and Lethal Company, there were fairly linear boosts in performance. Other than the increase in single core performance, the newer chips are more efficient, drawing less power to deliver more performance. But the takeaway might be that even if you're on such an old chip, you might be fine. Depending on what you're doing, if you play similar titles to me, you'll be fine. A 10-year-old CPU now holds up better than it did back then. As for overclocking, it didn't help an awful lot, other than increasing thermals and power and gave more potential for crashes. The overclock was only 7% over the 4.4 GHz. Overclocking just isn't the same as it used to be as long as processors don't have any headroom above stock speeds. Finally, the RX 5700 XT. This bitch gets hot. The hotspot easily gets over 110C, which pegs the fan at 100%. It seems that's just how the 5700 XT is. This temp is within spec. I just don't know how long AMD expects these to last at over boiling temps. When I run this card personally, I do so undervolted at 950 millivolts at about 1840 megahertz. There is a slight drop in performance, but it is significantly cooler and quieter. If you'd like me to show off undervolting for AMD cards, smash like and let me know in the comments. I have a few more cards that would take advantage of this, but the 5700 XT especially. But again, the RX 5700 XT is far from the best card. It's somewhere in the neighborhood around an RTX 3060 or 2070. So in most games, we are gonna be GPU bound. Let me know what CPU, GPU combo you're running in the comments below. And next time, I think I'll upgrade the Pentium and GT 1030 system into something more usable. Like, subscribe, bye.